For the battle 
Hey, good morning, everyone. We are so glad that you're able to join us this morning for worship. I'd like to encourage you to fill out a connection card sometime during the service by going to nccburg.com slash connect or by going to the church app and clicking connect. This will allow our church staff to continue ministering to you and your family while we meet and worship together online. After the service is over, we'd encourage those of you with kids to check out some resources that we made available for children and students on our website or on the church app. They include videos and activities for each age group that you can use at home. Again, thanks for joining us and let's continue to worship together. Hey, good morning. We're so glad you're with us. Welcome to Northside. Take a moment if you're on Facebook, share this live stream with all your friends so that they can join us. But let's just sing together. Let's worship God together. Come on.
Hi, Northside. We're the Luns. I'm Casey. This is Ava, Kara, and Jenna. And I'm Jessica. We just wanted to take this opportunity to reach out and say hi. So the girls and I have been home for five weeks now. It's definitely not an easy thing. Who knew staying home would be so challenging? As a family, this new pace has been kind of nice. We all have been doing Zoom meetings and FaceTime calls with our friends to stay connected and to see people. We've been spending time learning to cook and bake and organizing, playing outside, and what I like to call crisis learning from home. The girls' teachers and schools have been absolutely amazing in sending learning tools and websites for the girls to stay engaged with their school, and I think creates a bit of normalcy that they really need right now. What are your favorite things that we've done from home? Um, probably baking with my mom, doing online schoolwork, that my teachers send me because it's so fun. What about you, Jenna? Um, I like being with my family and going outside and you should do it too. We wanted to say thank you to the Northside staff who have really come through with the virtual outreach during this social distancing time. In the past, we've taken advantage of the Facebook Live worship services on Sunday mornings when we're out of town but it has really been something that we've needed to, since staying home to be connected with the church. Filling out that connection card every week has honestly been such a blessing because um, I really feel like I'm connected to the actual church service. I also um, try to watch the prayer requests on the Northside app. If you haven't done so, I'd really encourage you to do that as well. It's been a great way to be connected to our church family and pray for those who need our prayers right now. Um, the little girls are enjoying worship from home um, with the elementary content and videos that have been posted on the website for them. Jenna uh, had fun last week watching the video and was even upside down at one point. For Ava, the Forge Ministries have really put together a great program to keep the middle schoolers connected and active. It's been fun having Zoom meetings with the middle school girls and Miss Kate on Wednesday nights. And then, and then Nick posts a video of his lesson on Sunday mornings. It's been nice staying on a regular schedule each week and having people reach out to see how we're doing. I think for all of us, just keeping that connection to people and places we love is the most important thing right now. I would encourage everyone to reach out during this time. It could be to a church member, a neighbor, or just a friend. People are really missing that interaction um, and we can all make such a difference by just reaching out. Please stay safe, healthy, and friends, remember to wash those hands. We love you all. Bye. Bye. The end. <laughs>in high school, late 70s, early 80s, there were two types of television programs I watched that I, I can't remember the last time I watched either one. One, I, I thought about this week because I watched a documentary about Jimmy Superfly Snooker. Anybody know what that's about? You know, at home, do you know? Professional wrestling. I used to watch wrestling a lot. I, I was an amateur wrestler, which is a world away from professional wrestling. And I, I hate to break it to you, but uh, professional wrestling was scripted. <laughs> there was it was entertainment. Now <clears throat> some super athletes. The guys were really athletic. The the ladies now really athletic, but but it was all entertainment programming. And uh, Jimmy Superfly Snooker was uh, incredible acrobat, uh, but he also had lots of problems. And uh, and it went to the great links talking about that. You know it wasn't what it appeared to be. It, it was kind of fake if you will, at least the way it portrayed reality. <laughs> the other type of programming is uh, what I call faith healing preaching. Uh, evangelists that preached and, and would even feature in their services faith healing times. And uh, the person that comes to mind is Ernest Ainsley. Ernest Ainsley uh, is in Ohio. Believe it or not, he is still alive and, and even preaches some 98 years old. Uh, but he was uh, uh, famous for having on his program people that he would call on stage that uh, had different kinds of afflictions, and, and he would hit them in the head, and, and he, he would uh, do all kinds of things saying he was going to heal them. And, and uh, you know, it's been found out uh, behind the scenes, folks, 
revealed that a lot of that was staged. It was scripted. It wasn't real. And I know it's hurt a lot of people spiritually because it wasn't what it appeared to be. It made what is an amazing reality, what is a supernatural power that's available to all of us, it made it seem fake and false. You ask me what the greatest power on earth is. I think it's not nuclear power. I think it's not any kind of physical power. It is the ability to pray. And, you know, I, I was scheduled to be off this weekend. Uh, you'll notice I'm not in Matthew 7 today because uh, I decided to preach this week. And so I worked in and I thought, what do we need to hear in this time? And we're talking about this invisible enemy, the coronavirus. We've been thinking a lot about our physical health. What is it we need to hear? And I want to talk to you today about getting well. I want to talk to you today about healing. You might not know, and, and maybe you've been jaded or cynical because you've seen a televangelist like I'm talking about, but understand this, God is interested in healing, and He still brings healing to people today. Just not in the staged, in the scripted way. Uh, he, he doesn't rely on that kind of entertainment programming. He does bring healing. You might not know, but 41 times in the New Testament, uh, does Jesus heal somebody? And as we look through the rest of the New Testament, it's not as frequent, but there's still healing going on. I've been present uh, with praying with folks, and, and then later they had uh, healing. Their, their disease regressed or even sometimes went away. It can happen. We can be made well. That's what we want to explore today. So there are three questions that we're really going to think about today. Uh, how first should the elders pray for healing? How should the elders pray for healing? We're in James chapter 5, verses 14 through 15. It tells us this, Is anyone among you sick? I'll let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up if they have sinned they will be forgiven. So, how does the church pray for healing? It begins with the elders. This is scriptural. And we do this. We have done this many times in the 14 plus years I've been here. <clears throat> First, the sick person calls the elders. They, uh, the person has to let us know, uh, has to, to let the elders know, one of us know. And we then sometimes we'll go to the person's house. Sometimes we'll arrange a time here where the person comes. But if someone's health is at risk, then it's vital for us to know and, and hear that the elders of the church are available. First and foremost, the elders of the church are to be the spiritual shepherds, the overseers. They are to be men of prayer. And they are here for you. The sick person calls the elders. Secondly, you see this passage say that the elders then pray and anoint with oil. They pray and anoint with oil. Well, what does that mean exactly? Well, uh, anointing means just to, to rub oil on someone. <clears throat> we actually have some oil in my office. I, I, what, I looked at it right before I came uh, to preach. Uh, it's just off the shelf olive oil. When we were in Israel, uh, we actually were in shops where they had Different types of oil they labeled for different types of healing from different afflictions and maladies. <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't think it's the kind of oil that's so important. I've known uh, folks that anoint with olive oil, which is prevalent in the Mideast, but others have anointed with canola oil or peanut oil. It's not really so important, the oil. And the oil itself doesn't have the supernatural power. Not, not even the elders have that supernatural power. You see, the oil, I think, is it's an aid to faith. Just like when we celebrate the Lord's Supper, like we're going to, uh, we use bread and juice as symbols of Jesus' sacrifice. The oil, is, it's a symbol. It's an aid to faith. We're calling upon, as we anoint someone with oil, we're calling upon God to bring healing to that person if it be His will. It, we're calling on God uh, to come and, as it says here, to hopefully make this person well. And hopefully 
there is healing and forgiveness. Now, I say hopefully, but I will tell you that there can be forgiveness even if there's no physical healing. And sometimes maybe the, the physical healing is not granted in the way that we want to see happen. But we understand and see here that God, as He lays out this process for us, the sick person calls for the elders. The elders come and anoint with all that, that God is a source of healing and forgiveness. The third step is described, we read it earlier in James 5.15. The prayer offered in faith will make the person well. The Lord will raise him up. If he has sinned, he will be forgiven. This step is simply the expected result of steps one and two. The sick person is healed and his sins are forgiven. J James uses an unusual phrase here to describe the prayer. He calls it the prayer offered in faith. That phrase is used nowhere else in the New Testament. In one sense, every sincere prayer must be offered in faith or it can hardly be called prayer at all. Prayer is not a performance to be done in front of others. It is honest communication. It needs to be offered sincerely in faith. When the elders pray, they are to come to God with an attitude of complete trust that He can and will do what is needed in every situation. Now, notice the text says nothing about the healing, how it will come. It doesn't demand the miraculous or instantaneous healing. Nor does the healing in view rule out the use of medical care. Whether quickly or slowly, by miracle or by medicine or by some combination of the two, God can heal His children. Uh, one commentator puts it this way, there's no such thing, uh, so to speak, as non-spiritual healing. When the aspirin or the medicine works, it's the Lord who has made it work. When the surgeon sets the broken limb and the bone knits, it is the Lord who has made it knit. Every good gift is from above. It comes together and this healing is a combination of asking God for physical healers and supernatural spiritual healers and healings. Verse 15, let me tell you, this jumped out at me this week as I was studying. Verse 15 suggests a close relationship between the physical and the spiritual. The Greek construction, the language of the New Testament, of this if clause implies that the sin uh, that sin may be in, involved in the sickness. Now, my point is not for you to go looking for everybody that is sick to find that sin, but there is clearly a connection. Not all sickness is caused by a particular sin, but some illnesses stem directly from our sinful actions and attitudes, or they're made worse by our sin that is undealt with, that is unconfessed, that is unrepented of. Until those things, the disobedience, that rebellion against God is confronted and confessed, it's pointless to pray for healing. It is a clear teaching of Scripture that sin blocks our prayers, that undealt with sin keeps God from hearing our prayers. So that means then, when we see and have someone ask for healing, that we should think about the spiritual condition. We should determine and ask the question, uh, is there any consciousness of sin standing between the person and God, blocking His healing power? It, maybe it is that there needs to be first a spiritual question, a spiritual healing, and then the physical healing can continue. We need to ask that question. I can tell you, I haven't in the past, but there's a way to do that tactfully and sensitively. And, and I want you to hear today that if you're in need of healing, that, that you want to get right and confess what needs to be confessed before God. And then the channel can be opened. Then the channel can be opened. So that tells us how the elders should pray for healing. How then should we pray for healing? Uh, first, we pray aggressively. How do we pray for healing? Aggressively. You know, in Luke's Gospel, chapter 1, you see uh, that Mary, is in, she encounters an angel. The angel has startling, incredible news. The angel says, even though she's not been with a man, that she's going to have a baby. And we know that was going to be Jesus. And she says, 
I don't see how that could happen. And the angel says to her, for nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. Aggressive prayer uh, means that we expect something to happen. You know, I, I think we can be timid in our prayers. We can, be, uh, we can uh, not expect a lot. But aggressiveness, if you think something's going to happen, you can be aggressive about it. Uh, bringing our prayers and our needs to God needs to be uh, aggressive. We secondly are to pray fervently. Fervently. And therefore, this is the follow-on verse to the passage we looked at earlier, James chapter 5, 14 and 15. Verse 16 says, Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Again, there is that connection between the spiritual and the physical. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. And what this says is that, that fervency, it, it calls to mind the Greek word of boiling. Our prayers to be boiling. I, I don't know if you've ever given boiling prayers to God. If a kid gets sick, then you'll find out about boiling prayers. If you're in a need where you can't see any other way, but you can take it to God, then you have boiling prayers. Fervently means passionately. It means that, that kind of boiling that, that overflows. You know, you, you boil something on the stove, you put too much water in it, it boils over. That's the kind of Prayer, uh, prayers God wants us to pray with. And thirdly, we're to pray confidently. Confidently. In Hebrews chapter 4, it says, let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. What is it that gives us confidence? I suggest to you, think in the past. You look back and see how God has answered your prayers in the past. How God has been faithful to you. As God has shown up and provided for you. That then gives you the confidence to know He will continue. And, and we can approach Him uh, with that same kind of confidence. And fourthly, we're to pray repeatedly. Repeatedly. I'm going to talk about this uh, next week. But I want to at least mention it to you. This is in from Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 and 8. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For anyone, everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Those verbs are in that form, the participle form that means continually. They ask continually. They seek continually. They knock continually. You know what, I think about it, this when we're talking about every morning for me. I'm in the bed and uh, Josh comes in usually about 6 o'clock and he is like a repetitive, he's a, rec a record over and over. When are you going to get up, Dad? When are you going to get up, Dad? When are you going to get up, Dad? So I know there's no sense in me trying to sleep through it because he's repetitive, I respond. I think if he just asked me once, I'd probably just turn over. But he keeps asking. The scripture says here in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus is saying over and over you should ask. Over and over you should seek. Over and over you should knock. Over and over you should pray. Pray repeatedly. And then maybe the most important attribute of our prayers, it's we should pray submissively. Uh, this then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Jesus is teaching his disciples to pray. This is the Lord's Prayer. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What you're saying is, God, I believe that you are all powerful. I, I believe in your kingdom. I'm part of your kingdom. And I want your will to be done in my life. I want your will to be done in this church, I want your will to be done as I pray and ask you for things. And so, as we pray for healing, we pray for it to be in God's will. So, how should the prayer elders pray for healing? How should we pray for healing? And then, let me give you some summary points. Three truths about healing that I hope will help bring all this together and and we'll have you on your knees before God, have you praying 
for God. If you're sick, calling the elders. But understand this, that first we faithfully pray and trust God's answer. The reality is, you can pray exactly like I've told you today. You can have the elders come and anoint with oil. You can pray in all of those different ways, aggressively and fervently and confidently and repeatedly and submissively. And yet, sometimes that person doesn't get well. It, it doesn't always work. So each part of this truth is important. We faithfully pray and trust God's answer. If you ask me to give you in one sentence my theology of prayer, it would be that we do the praying and God does the healing in His own time, in His own way, according to His own will. Let me say that again. We do the praying and God does the healing in His own time, in His own way, according to His own will. That is hard for us to understand. It's hard for us to completely trust and give it to God. But that's exactly what I found uh, that needs to happen. I need to trust God. And I need to ask Him. Trust that God knows best. Uh, Romans 8, 28, one of my favorite verses says, And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. <clears throat> God doesn't always answer in the way we expect. But He does answer. And he can be trusted. You know, uh, we never know all that we can know. We don't know all the answers. Hard for us to understand that. We have to let God be God. Man, his answers, uh, I think we trust. But know this, that even if there is not physical healing right now, that there is response. And... More importantly, I would tell you the ultimate healing is spiritual. The ultimate healing is spiritual. It's one of the most important things I can tell you today is this, that the ultimate healing is spiritual. Most of us think of healing as getting rid of the disease. It's like running the clock of life backward and restoring the person to their previous state. But in the Bible, healing means coming into a right relationship with God First and foremost, let me say that again. In the Bible, healing means coming into a right relationship with God first and foremost. That's why it's so important to ask if there's any sin cause to the sickness because it's this spiritual wellness that has to come and is more important than the physical wellness. Then it touches every part of life, body, soul, and spirit. It brings us, if we are right with God and right before God, it brings us to a place where we can receive God's blessings in a new and powerful way. It goes far beyond pray for my son because he broke his arm in football practice. Healing is not going back to what we were before. It is going on to what all that God wants us to be. Think about that for a moment. When we pray for healing, we dare not focus on the physical to the exclusion of the spiritual, emotional, and relational facets of life. We are not healed until we are made whole on every level of our existence. To say it another way, what's the point of being healed physically if we end up just as ornery as we were before? If we're still greedy, or still impatient, or still harbor a critical spirit, the miracle has been wasted on us. If we dwell on our resentments, even after God delivers us from cancer, what have we gained? We may be physically well, but spiritually, we're in bad shape. We need healing that works both ways, from the outside in and from the inside out. You know, I've been talking a lot on my devotions that you'll see in the coming week if you get onto our platforms Every morning, Monday through Friday at 6 a.m., we release, we release daily devotions. We've been talking about Psalm 32, and I want to read it to you. I won't give it a lot of commentary today, but I want you to see how this conveys this truth. The ultimate healing is spiritual, not physical. This is a psalm from David that was used in worship. And David begins, he would have said this in the worship service, Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven. What does blessed mean? It means divinely favored. It means blissfully content or well. 
Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them, and whose spirit is no deceit. Then David has a personal confessional. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy on me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of the summer. There is not a better scripture to talk about how that our sinfulness, it corrodes us from the inside out. You ever seen something that's corroded or rusted out? It, it just That's what happens to us inside if we allow sin to live undealt with. We allow it to continue to work its way in us, to make us angry or bitter, uh, to make us just see things in a cynical or jaded way that it corrodes us. And he says here, it just, it just sapped his spirit. It, it made him feel weak. It made him feel heavily burdened. Boy, that's what happens. That's the opposite of wellness. He says, then I acknowledge my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. Another word for sin. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Back to verse 1. Blessed is he who is forgiven. Therefore, verse 6, let all the faithful pray to you while you may be found. That is, at this day, at this moment. Don't, don't say, I'm going to pray next week or next month. I, I've got to grow spiritually before I can get to the point where I know. We, we, I've given you all that you need. You pray fervently in faith, aggressively, confidently, repeatedly, and submissively. You pray right now while he may be found. This day is the only day you can control. This is the only day you can do something about. Pray this day. Surely the rising waters will not reach them. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. So what David is saying is, if my spirit is right, if I've dealt with my sin, if I've, I've gotten clean from all that, then I'm strong. Then I'm wise. Then I'm well. Then I can handle whatever comes. And I'm saying that to you today. I'm saying that to you. Whatever comes, if you are spiritually right, you can deal with it. Because God has your back. He's got your future in place. And that leads me to this. The most important thing I can say. Some of you are discouraged. Some of you are disappointed about praying because maybe you prayed for a grandfather or grandmother when you were young and, and they died anyway. Or somebody else you feel disappointed about as you prayed about Listen, all healing in this life is partial and temporary. This is temporary. 80, 90 years may seem like a lot of years, but it's a drop in the bucket compared to eternity. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 says, So it will be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is sown is perishable. It is raised imperishable. So let's say you get a yes and you're healed of this cancer right now, or you're healed of this, this high blood pressure right now, I'm guaranteeing you something else is going to pop up if you live 80, 90, 100 years. These bodies we have are perishable. The body that sons are perishable. It is raised imperishable. It is raised in perishable, it is sown in dishonor. It's raised in glory, it is sown in weakness. It is raised in power, it is sown a natural body. It is raised up a spiritual body. What that says is, this life, this body, is going to gradually give out. No matter how many times you're healed. But the ultimate healing is, you will have a new body, a spiritual body, when you leave this life. Your spirit will inhabit a new spiritual body. If there's a natural body, and we know that's true, there's also a spiritual body. And then later, a little later in verse 52, when the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, that is, when you see God face to face, when you go to heaven, there'll be no more anointing with oil, there'll be no more praying because we'll have imperishable, eternal spiritual bodies, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Listen, death has been swallowed up in victory. 
Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. It will be no more. There will be no more disease, no more pain, no more mourning, no more tears. So we pray today first for spiritual wellness. And then I encourage you to pray for, spirit, uh, for physical healing and physical wellness. Call the elders of the church to do that. But know this, we are pointing to where we're headed in the future. You know, one of the great benefits of this weird time we're in, and we've had lots and lots of people watching us online. Over a thousand people every week. And you know, it's not just people in Johnson County, Missouri. What's been neat is I've had people watching from churches I served 30 years ago. From the mountains of Bristol, Tennessee, to the Piedmont of Winder, Georgia, Oconee County, and its environs, from people that have been here in our worship and, and our fellowship, and then the Air Force has taken somewhere else to Oregon or to Texas, the people that were here for college and watch us. We see people from all over the country. What's amazing is that we are not physically in one's presence anymore, but now we can be connected. And what that all says and points me to is this life is about getting well and building relationships with others. And there are people that are watching us now that I prayed for in the hospital and they were made well for a time. There are people that I've uh, pray, uh, preached their loved one's funerals. But this all is, uh, it's, it's just a trial run for when we all get together in heaven. That's the ultimate healing I want you to focus on today. That is what encourages you to get right, to live right before God. Because when you're right before Him, He will deliver you. He will protect you. He is your hiding place. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you for the fellowship of the church, far more that can be contained in these walls. 2,000 years, there have been folks who have left a life of being self-centered and, and have become Christ-centered. And our currency is to be people of prayer. Father, I pray today that we've been encouraged we are hopeful now for what can be. That if we are sick, we would call the elders and have them come pray for us or uh, pray uh, virtually if we need it right now. I pray that each of us would become people of prayer that, that learn to pray aggressively and fervently and confidently, that learn to pray repeatedly and submissively. But Father, most of all, I pray that we will get right with you. For when we're right with you, we can handle whatever comes. When we're right with you, we have an open, open channel to pray and communicate with you. When we're right with you, we know that this is not the end. This perishable body is not our final body, our, body, our eternal body. This is a perishable body, but you have an imperishable body for us. Father, I pray today that we get right. That we don't let this day die without getting right with you. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you want to talk to somebody about how to get right, then let us know. Email us. Call us. Message us on any of those platforms. We can help you with that. If you want to make, become a Christian, let us know. We can help you. If you want to join our church formally, we can help you with that. But I hope today has been good for you. I hope today you are in the process of getting well. Good morning, brothers and sisters. My name is Adrian Sanchez. I function as the field director for Southern Mexico Missions. My family and I also serve in the local church here in Texcoco, Mexico. SMM empowers people to grow closer to God through evangelism, discipleship, mentoring programs, and service projects. 
SMM currently supports six evangelists that are currently serving in five different southern states of Mexico. We are very thankful for your partnership and the work God is doing in southern Mexico. You have been instrumental in the transformation of many people's lives and habits. Recently, we also had to cancel our services and go to online services. I believe this has been a new opportunity to reach the world that is around us. I encourage you to share Bible studies or church services for others to be blessed on your Facebook uh, by the message that is being shared. You never know what impact this might have in other people's lives. As we share this time of communion together, I would like for us to read Luke chapter 22, verses 14 through 20. When the hour had come, he reclined at the table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I shall never again eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And when he had taken a cup and given thanks, he said, this, take this and share it among, our, among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine from now until the kingdom of God comes. And when he had taken some bread and given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, for which it is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way he took the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup, which is poured out for you, is the new covenant in my blood. Luke chapter 22, verse 14 through 20. I would like for us to focus today, or, or I would like for our focus to be today on Jesus. What qualities do you remember of his earthly life? Compassion, mercy, love, patience. There is much more to remember of Jesus. But how many of us take this time to remember these amazing things Jesus demonstrated for us to follow? Have we done a good job following Him? Is this a good time to measure ourselves to Him and see if we have been what He wants us to be? Have we been maturing? And if not, then it's time to ask for forgiveness. It's time to work on these things as we live our daily lives. So as we take this Lord's Supper, may we continue to be a blessing to others um, as well as think about what we can do for Jesus. Will you pray? Dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you so much for the opportunity that you give us to be part of your family. I thank you because you love us so much that you sent Jesus to die on the cross for us. And as we partake of this bread and of this cup, we want to remember what Jesus did here on earth. We want to remember so that we can also transform our lives. We want to be more like Jesus. Give us the wisdom we need to be able to do this and help us share your gospel with others. We love you so much. Just ask that we can be of encouragement to others in this time of need. Thank you so much for the church at Northside. And I thank you for this opportunity you give us to be part of the service. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Till from heaven you came running, there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets. To a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt. so thankful for the opportunity to be together this morning as a church family. Again, I'd like to encourage you to check out the website and the church app for many resources our team has put together for your family. All these resources can be found under the Worship at Home section of the website and the church app. If you haven't filled out a connection card yet, please take a second to jump over to the church app or go to nccburg.com connect to fill one out. Be sure to let us know of any prayer requests that you have when filling out the connection card so we can be praying for you. I hope you can tune in next weekend as we continue our series, Kingdom Life. Thanks again for being with us. Have a great week.